Battlefield 5 is the first Battlefield game in nearly a decade now that's been free of premium. The season pass service that charged gamers for access to extra content outside of what was included in the game at launch. Battlefield 3, 4, Hardline and 1 all featured this season pass model and in my opinion they suffered greatly in the long run when it came to player retention. Putting up a paywall in front of extra content which almost always improved the game experience clearly didn't sit well with fans. The money the season pass cost could be put towards a completely different game and many of the more passive players of Battlefield games just simply didn't buy into the system. Rumour has it that the amount of sales of premium for Battlefield 1 were quite a bit lower than those of Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 3 and I think that led to a rather aggressive sales strategy early on in Battlefield 1's life. As time wore on, EA did loosen the grip and started handing out paid content for free and recently they were giving away the entire premium pass for Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 4 completely for free as well and that saw player numbers of Battlefield 1 rise to their highest point on the PC platform for nearly 18 months. That's the power of free content. Enter then Battlefield 5, the game of free content. This game is going to adopt a live service model and it's going to offer post-launch content for free to all players who own the base game. This means maps, weapons, vehicles, gadgets, game modes, new armies, new theatres, new experiences, new everything will be for everybody to join in with the moment they're added. And the segregating of the community that existed with the premium model in previous games, that will be gone completely. Now certain items like cosmetic customization for your soldiers, vehicles and weapons will not be free but instead those will be used to support development of the game by being a microtransaction system. They will only be cosmetic however, they won't affect gameplay and they are totally optional. If you don't want to buy them, you don't have to. However, looking at previous EA titles over the last two years, I can totally understand the apprehension of some Battlefield fans at this model being applied to the next big title in the franchise. Titanfall 2 back in 2016 suffered from being sandwiched between Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty Infinite Warfare and ended up with significantly less sales overall leading to a fairly lacklustre live service. Mass Effect Andromeda saw support for single player story content stopped not long after launch and sales were extremely lacklustre as well that likely led to a drop in post launch support. And of course we have Star Wars Battlefront 2. That game received massive player backlash at launch and has received extremely sporadic and patchy support since the launch of the game with very little tangible content being released and DICE seemingly being unable to balance replacing that progression system with something that wasn't inherently a pay to win scheme alongside delivering the level of content that I think the community around that game really expected. That doesn't read well for Battlefield 5, which has got more than enough controversy surrounding it already. What can we really expect from EA and DICE in terms of support for this Battlefield title? Well, first of all, let's look at what information we actually have so far from DICE and EA about the support system for Battlefield 5. DICE has confirmed the game's live service, titled Tides of War, is going to take players on a free journey across World War II, starting with the game's launch, where the battles, maps and weaponry focus on the fall of Europe, set in spring 1940. Now according to the This Is Battlefield 5 trailer, we can expect plenty of events and new content coming daily and weekly for Battlefield 5. That's a big target to set straight out of the gate. This is the first of many chapters, the fall of Europe, it's the first of many chapters that the game will support and it's also the first of many theatres the game will support as well. DICE specifically stated in their reveal livestream there would be no expansion packs or DLC at all and all content would come through the Tides of War live service. And additionally, it's recently been confirmed that in early 2019 a new location will be added to the game, Greece. What this new location will actually include, nobody knows at the moment. Now taking that official information, I think we can make some assumptions but 
Let me make it clear. This is not confirmed information and it's just my own take on what DICE is likely to deliver based on what they've revealed so far. I think it's reasonable to assume that big players in the war like the USA, Russia and Japan are likely to be added into Battlefield 5 as part of the live service. As I've mentioned, the launch of this game focuses on the spring of 1940 and the battles taking place in Europe as the Germans advanced and claimed more and more land for their own. As Tides of War is going to follow the war chronologically, but likely sped up a little bit, you can expect the Pacific Theatre and the Eastern Front, I think, and considering DICE is adding Greece into the game in early 2019, we might see the expansion of the African and Middle Eastern Fronts as well. I've seen lots of comments from lots of different people down in my comment section asking where some of the more well-known World War II locations are. Places like Stalingrad, Berlin, Iwo Jima, the D-Day landings in Normandy. Those things didn't happen in the spring of 1940 and because the game is set here, that's where things are going to start and likely as the tides of war move on, we're going to see some of those iconic locations make their way into the game. That said, nothing has been confirmed. If you just look at the information we have at the moment, I think that is something that is likely to happen. When those theatres and when those battles are added into the game and are the focus within different chapters of the Tides of War, that's when I think we'll see the addition of themed weaponry, vehicles, outfits and equipment as part of those chapters. As the game shifts focus and brings in the Americans and the Japanese, you can probably expect to see more American and Japanese weaponry coming into Battlefield 5 as well. Now one thing I think we can pretty much count on is a change in the way that content is going to be delivered for this game. DICE has said no expansion packs and they've set the precedent of updating the game daily and weekly. Typically the older expansion packs and DLCs, they would deliver all of the themed content in one big lump for players to dive into and explore. This is what Battlefield 3, 4, Hardline and 1 did. That's not going to happen in Battlefield 5. I think the content, be it maps, weapons, vehicles, clothing, whatever, that will be spread out across each chapter and the theatre added into the game. With the new theatre being added, for example, perhaps the focus of the game is going to be for three months on the Pacific Theatre. Just as an example, completely hypothetical. Rather than dumping all of the content at the beginning of those three months, I think DICE is likely to spread the content out and deliver drops across those three months in order to keep players engaged with fresh content coming all of the time. The problem I always felt with Premium was that all the content was dumped into one huge update and that led people to not really properly digesting all of that content. Rather than getting six maps added at once, as was with the Russian DLC in Battlefield 1, I think one per month over a six month period would have been a far better way of getting players not only to be excited, but also to come back to the game more regularly. Typically, DLCs or expansion packs for Battlefield games in the past, they spike the player numbers for just a couple of weeks after their launch and then the numbers drop back down again, with people simply waiting for the next update. With Battlefield 5, I think we can expect to see smaller drops overall and spreading out of the content, but those content drops coming more frequently than a DLC or expansion pack. But, and this is the pivotal point here, can a live service that players are able to take part in for free possibly deliver as much content as a season pass that required you to pay for it? Can DICE deliver maps, weapons, cosmetics, vehicles, game modes, new armies and much much more without asking the player to pay anything more than what they paid for the main game? Personally, I don't think so. I believe the live service model is what's best for the community, keeping everyone together and allowing them to experience all of the new content that we do get for free, but I don't think DICE can realistically deliver as much content as they have in the past with paid gated systems. I do however feel, with the content being delivered in this manner much more frequently, that the quality standard will have to be higher 
because each update will need to impress, excite and engage players. With previous DLCs and expansion packs, I think there was a wide range of quality overall, some maps being much better than others, some weapons being far more popular and useful, some vehicles being far more useful to the battles happening, and so on. For example, Battlefield 1 ended up with 31 maps in total. That's an insane amount of maps, far more than I'd argue we all want to play all of the time. I think we all have our favourites, and there are some standout stinkers as well. I mean, Galicia, River Somme and Caporetto come straight into my mind as bad maps in Battlefield 1. What I think we need to all understand here, and kind of accept, is that the Tides of War live service is not going to be the same as it has been for post-launch support in the past for Battlefield games. I think we're going to have to adapt to what DICE deliver and see if it is something that we are happy with or not. As consumers, at the end of the day, we are the people playing these games, and if we don't think they're providing a good enough service, then we're free not to return to these games and to go out and find another one to play. I'm hoping that this live service for Battlefield 5 does deliver on what it has set out to do, but I'm going to reserve my judgement until I can actually see what DICE start doing. Previous evidence for EA titles doesn't suggest that this is going to go very well, but DICE has been speaking very confidently about the live service The Tides of War for this title, so I won't say yet if it's going to be good or not, but I will just simply wait to see how they start things off. And if they start things off well, then, you know, we could be in for a good run here. If things don't start very well, then we could end up with another scenario like Mass Effect Andromeda, Titanfall 2, or even Star Wars Battlefront 2. Although, we don't have the pay-to-win issue in this game, so I think Battlefield 5 at least has got a slight upper hand when you look at that game. Now today, I'd love to get your opinions on this topic. How do you feel about DICE moving to a live service, free to access support model rather than continuing on with premium and the season pass system from previous titles. Let me know how you feel down below in the comments section. Make sure you subscribe to the channel with notifications switched on, that way you won't miss any of my future videos, and thank you very much for watching today. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.